Charlie's back. Charlotte Flair. Good old Charlie. But don't worry. Clearly, WWE has a plan this time. They'll have her get in line and I go. I don't wait in line. I'm, s- I'm sorry. Excuse what's that? Excuse me? No, excuse me. I didn't know. If I don't wait in line. No, you have to get in line because you. I don't wait in line. No, Charlotte, you have to get in line. There's a whole division that you have to. You have to get in line. I don't wait in line. No, you really have to get in line because. I don't wait in line. Well, what do you think? You made the line or something? You, you got. I made the line. Okay, she, Charlotte, Woo! please. No, don't woo me. Please get. Just get in line, please. Thank you. Excuse me. Just get in. Li- you got to get in line. I Okay, okay, that's enough. C- cut her mic, cut her mic. It is clear she doesn't wait in line. You know how we know this? It's rinse and repeat. It is every single time as of late. This is the new normal in WWE. Charlie Flair gets a quick title because she has to. She has to get closer and closer to her father's 16 time. Let's get that in frame. 16 time. World Championship, so we have to get closer and closer. The very next one, guys, is 15, 15 times. So the way they're doing it now is they're going to have her win a quick title, drop it not long after, go away so that she can get that cheap pop when she comes back. You know, the fans haven't seen you in a while. It's a little bit of a shock to the system. Oh, shoot. Haven't seen Charlie in a second. They'll do it for fucking Drew Gulak or a Ricochet, a Dan Garcia or an Action Andretti, a Dante Martin or a Julius Martin. They don't care. They haven't seen in a while. Hey, good to see you. How you doing, huh? Right? So this is the new... This is what they do now. Charlie Flair said it herself in an interview when asked, why do you feel you're not connecting with the crowd after all these years? And you know what her response was? You talk about delusional. It was, I don't, I think it's because I haven't gone away for a while. They haven't had a, this is a quote. They haven't had a chance to miss me. So she must have got together with Pinocchio, Pussface, Schnoz McGee, Hunter Hearst Helmsley, and they decided, well, what if... What if I just go away a lot more, right? Almost like the Roman thing, but literally just stay away for several months at a time. A month here, a month where it's been a couple months since Mania. I'll just go away. I'll let them miss me. I'll come back. I'll get that huge pop. We'll ride that momentum for a quick title victory. And then I'll drop it a month or two later. I'll leave again. I'll come back. I'll instantly get another title match. And we'll do this until I beat my father. That's what they're doing. They just recently did it with Ronda Rousey. She went away, came back, and on night one, she defeated Ronda Rousey for the championship. And fans have set their bar so low that they accepted it. They said, well, at least it's off of Ronda. You don't care how we got there? If you want to get the Disney World in Orlando, that's cool. And if you reach your destination fast, even better... But if you get there by running human beings over all the way from Maine to Florida, is that really, is that really a good way to get to Orlando, Florida's Disney World? You ran over 714 human beings. Eh, they were in the way, basically. I had to get to Space Mountain. No, how you get there matters, right? You want to get there legit. You want to get there in a good way. She just comes back, she defeats Ronda Rousey, and that's it. And a couple months later, she drops the title, and she's gone again. She comes back last night, and here we are. And we, we didn't even joke about it at Night of Champions, did we? We didn't even joke about it. That's how sad this is. We don't joke about it anymore. We literally just say, well, Asuka clearly got the title because they just want Asuka to be the fall job. To Charlie. You know damn well Charlie's coming back. You know damn well Charlie's beating Asuka now. And they just didn't want to do the job over Bel Air. That was the whole... Asuka is literally just the middle... Once again, Asuka has a title just to hold the hand of other people. In this case, once again, Charlie. You remember when Asuka had the Raw Championship 
few years back, and she never really had a title defense. Instead, she had to hold the hand of Lana. And when Charlotte came back, Lana was kicked to the curb, and Asuka, as champion, had to hold the hand of Charlie to give her a rub in a stupid tag team. And eventually, the title just went back to Charlie anyway. Well, now Asuka is just with the championship. She's a champion, and she's just there to rub, to get all that rub over to Charlie Flair. This is all the Charlie agenda, the Charlie Flair project. We're doing it once again. What did you, what did you enjoy last night? Because that's what I'm hearing, right? And BC's not having it. I, I, I will deal with no BS today. I'm not dealing with any, if you honestly think this was a good show, that is good for you. That's your honest opinion. That's your thought process. Good for you. Play with that somewhere in a corner. Roll up in the ball and play with that thought process. But if you're going to remove the word think, you think it was a good show, and you're going to try to sell BC that this was a good show, like you're going to declare this was a good show, you clearly do not know what you're talking about. And the problem is everybody has 140 characters, so everybody thinks they're a critic. Every fan is now a critic. I can do what Beastly's doing. No, you have to know everything about what you're talking about. Your history. Do your research. Do you know all of the numbers for AEW, WWE's Raw, SmackDown, the NXT numbers? Do you know what wrestlers are producing? Do you know what their match, win-loss column record is? Those greatly affect the outcome of the perception of the audience. Do you have any semblance of creativity in you so that you can see the trajectory of where the company would be better off? Are you following the network talk? Are you seeing which advertisers are working with who? All of this you have to factor in if you're going to call yourself a true critic. Or are you just a fan that has 140 characters and you think you can do what Blazely does? Because it's a lot harder than you think. Yeah, you got to be entertaining. You got to have the gift to gab. You have to have all your research in lockstep. You have to have all your ducks in a row in terms of knowledge with this product. You have to have your metrics, your numbers, your statistics ready to rock at any given moment. More than anything, logic and common sense has to be at the forefront from the jump. And that's something nobody has anymore. Everybody just wants to jump on their social doohickey machine and say, this was a good show. What was good about this show? Charlie Flair comes back and Charlie Flair automatically declares another championship. And when Pierce, who's supposed to be authority, says, wait, you got to get in line. Charlie says, I don't wait in line. I made the line. And Asuka says, okay, I accept. And in three weeks, right before the pay-per-view, because you don't want to do Asuka any ju- you don't want to give Asuka any shine. You want to have her drop the title before the pay-per-view. Makes fucking sense. So three weeks, Charlotte will get the match over Asuka. Not Bianca Belair, nobody else that was next in line. It's going to be right to Charlie Flair. That was good to you? Charlie Flair, it's rinse and repeat. It's the same process. She drops the title. She goes away. She tries to make people miss her. She gets a big, a a, a nice pop. Everybody's wooing, right? Everybody woos her when she comes back. And after, just next week, you'll start to hear those fade out. And after three, four weeks, what happens? They turn to booze. That's what just happened, right? She got a great pop in Miami. Or Tampa Bay, I think it was, when she returned. And defeated Ronda and all that jazz. Okay, she got a nice pop. And what happened a month later? She was being booed. She was pleading, begging the crowd during a promo to be more respectful. This is meaningful to her, what she's about to say. Please don't boo her. That's what she said a month after getting cheered because she was back. She doesn't connect. That's the problem. This isn't shade. Ashley Flair could be a beautiful human being. That's great. We want as fans, as critics especially, so we don't have to keep keep going over this bullshit. 
We want Charlotte Flair, the character, to succeed. We're trying to help. We're trying to raise the red flag for years now. It's not working. There's no connection with the crowd. If she doesn't go away for a while and come back to get the, the big woo pop when she just comes back, there's nothing. There's nothing. It'll fall on its face by the time they reach the Asuka match. In fact, by week four, she was being booed last time. They probably sensed that, and now they're going to do three weeks she gets the title. That way, she's not being booed when she gets it. <laughs> they're like, all right, they booed you by week four. I think we have three good weeks of a window to get that title over to you. And that's the game that we're playing once again. Here we are. And that's good to you, Charlotte Flair. Charlotte Flair coming back and automatically declaring a title match. That's a good show to you. Alba Fire. Alba Fire. I got audio on this. Alba Fire and Isla Dawn. Declaring a unification title match with Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler with no authority figure backing it up. They just made a unification match. And you say, well, BC, it could be realistic if they just say it's title for title, right? But that's not the only thing that was said. Alba and Isla, you hear it for yourself last night. They said, oh, you want the unification match. They said the word unification. This isn't just title for title and somebody's going to hold all the titles. They're going to unify them. It, they said the word. They accidentally, maybe, maybe they're not even thinking about what they're saying. And I blame Pinocchio, Pussface, Hunter Hearst Helmsley for that. But they said unification. You can, you don't, what are you, Jack fucking Tunney? Does anybody remember Jack Tunney? We, we need a president to make that decision. A VKM, even a Pinocchio HHH, somebody of authority. I'll even take an Adam Pierce at this point to give us some semblance that somebody cares about decisions like this. Listen. Oh, how cute So you two want to face us in a unification match. Oh, how exciting. Title versus title. <laughs> We accept Satan. <laughs> How exciting! <Satan. laughs> In a unification match. In a unification match. <laughs> In a unification match. Unifying the titles. Uh, now, 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 this isn't the uh, this is the right decision, basically. As long as we get to that decision, I'm okay with it. Again, we're lowering our bar. We're lowering our standards. What are we doing? It's the same thing with Rhonda. As long as they get it off Rhonda, I'm good, BC. But look at how we got there, Charlie. On the first night, you're just giving WWE, you're, you're giving them more, more and more inches off that collar. And before you know it, that dog is going to go wherever he wants. You'll have no control over it because you keep loosening up that leash. And WWE sees, well, damn, they were okay with that. They just wanted it off Rhonda, man. We could try this again. Let's have Charlotte go away. We'll have her come back. It's those fans that are lowering the bar. You're not part of the solution to make this better. You're part of the problem. And last night, you, 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 this is, this is what be say, man. And let's be honest, man. The, the titles need to be unified with the tag teams, and, and let's hope they do it better. As long as we got there, BC. Guys, this doesn't make sense. The four ladies are declaring their own unification. There's not one authority figure that approved this. Nobody cared to come out and be like, whoa, you can't just unify our gold title, our titles. What are you doing? What are you, at this point, what is stopping them from going, well, hey, maybe, uh, maybe we can uh, become the uh, CEO tomorrow. Who's going to stop us? I'm going to declare myself CEO of WWE. Hey, let's burn down WWE. Who's going to stop you? They'll start running, running the catering lists. They'll start choosing which Windex to put on the fucker, which cleaner, right? I want Windex. Fuck your clear X. That's what we're going to start washing the windows with. They're going to be making all the operational decisions. Now you laugh. You go, basically, that's funny, man. But what are we doing? You can't, the wrestlers can't just unify. Their, you can you can try to challenge for the titles, and then an authority figure will say, hey, you know what? Title versus title. Somebody's going to walk out with all the gold? Okay. But to unify the some bitches, that means you're... What are we doing? Nobody cares how we got there. 
We're lowering our standards and bars so much that when WWE just does not care at all, throws these individuals out there, just gets it, like rips the band-aid off, does not care about any creativity, how we're getting to these places of new championship titles being crowned, people coming back and putting themselves in automatic title matches, unification matches, come popping out of your fucking ass like a unicorn with sprinkles on top. Nobody knows how we're getting there and nobody cares. WWE is throwing them out there, ripping off the band-aid, and we're all like, hmm, at least it's being done. No, BC standards are up there. That's what makes me the best at what I do. I'm not going to ever accept this bullshit just because it's something that should be done correctly. Like Asuka holding the title over Bianca. Of course, that's the right call. The problem is it's a month late. HHH Schnaz McGee fucked up royally on Sunday, April 2nd. It wasn't just the Cody Rhodes, Roman Reigns BS. It was the Oscar Belair. And to prove that, he even knew that. Night of Champions, the belt changes hands. The strap, the title, the championship changes hands over to Oscar. You're a month late, buddy. That should have been at the big moment. Instead of making Oscar 0 and 5 at WrestleMania, she could have been 1 and 4. She could have had a big moment. She could have had the pyro there. No, you do it at a C-rated premium live event on a Saturday afternoon only because you knew you were going to stop the Raw SmackDown brand-splitted championship color schemes, right? Raw Women's Championship, Blue SmackDown Women's Championship. You knew you were going to stop that, and you didn't want Belair to be in the crosshairs. You didn't want Charlotte Flair to beat Belair, so you thought Asuka was expendable. We'll use her as the fall guy. Of course. Of course. Then why not just have her win at Mania? Have her have some semblance of a run? A couple months? Two, three months? What was good for you, right? Because that's what I see a little bit in the community. This was such a good show. Right? Every fan becomes a critic. Well, basically, I see you do it, man. I, I, so I went on Twitter and I gave my opinion. I'm not just giving opinion, guys. I understand it's a podcast and I give a lot because I have to. These podcasts are usually an hour plus. I do my due diligence just because this is not a, a job for BC. It has become the more successful the channel gets, thankfully. So it does become a job of sorts. But this is not a full-time job like other creators that you watch. This is BC's hobby. It always will be. But if you only knew how much work goes into the due diligence of getting the numbers, the statistics, the metrics, all of it together to do my research, to remember my history, to be creative enough to see where what is going a mile ahead of the company, to know what I'm talking about and and utilize common sense and logic at all times, that's not easy to do. But you also have to have that it factor if you want to truly dissect professional wrestling and call yourself a critic. The problem is too many fans think they're a critic, think they know what they're talking about, and they love to dish their opinion. So they start yapping their fucking gums and tweeting their little thumbs off. And this is the product we get because they think it's okay. This was a good show last night. Charlotte came back and automatically in front of Pierce. There was actually some semblance of an authority figure, and she's just, she overrode him. She's like, "Yeah, I don't get in line, buddy." Uh, by the way, Oscar, I'm I'm getting the title match. And this was moments after Pierce just told Belair she would get it. That was good to you, Charlotte, doing the rinse and repeat comeback. I'm automatically getting a title match. That was good. Alba Fire and Isla Dawn. Having setting up a unification match with Ronda and Shayna with no authority presence, nobody actually made that a prevalent a prevalent thing. They just made it to just shot it right out of their ass, and all of a sudden it's official. And nobody has a problem with how we're doing this, how we're setting this stuff up. Even if you think that's the right call. Can't we be creative and set this up in a more realistic approach or with a more realistic approach for fans like BC that want to believe in this? I say it all the time. I'll believe Bray Wyatt's supernatural shit any day of the week if you do it correctly. I'll believe The Undertaker is coming back from the dead and shooting lightning bolts out of his hand. I'll believe Voodoo from Papa Shango. 
I believe that that Braun Strowman can tip an ambulance on top of Roman and Roman survives. I'll believe anything in, in pro wrestling because it is a wacky world of anything goes. But if you do it correctly, that's the only way I can meet you halfway and suspend my disbelief. I believe all the supernatural, all the voodoo, all the coming back to life. I believe all of it if done correctly. But if you have something simplistic as four ladies setting up a unification match with no justification for it authority-wise, I can't believe it. Nobody cared. They just sent them out there and said, hey, rip the Band-Aid off and we can just get this done with. We'll just throw a new title on Asuka. We won't give any reasoning. We'll have Charlie come back so the real headline will just be Charlie anyway, not the fact that we just got rid of. We didn't even mention the Raw and SmackDown titles. We just literally snapped our fingers, blinked our eye, expecto petroleum, some Harry Potter shit, and the titles are gone. Charlotte Flair comes back and she just puts herself in a title match. That was good to you? Isla and Alba and Ronda and Shayna just set up their own unification match and that makes sense to you. That's good to you. That's a good show. Bailey defeats Munchkin last night in a Money in the Bank qualifier in like three or four minutes. That was good to you. Butch defeated Baron Corbin in a qualifying match. Butch and Corbin, did that, that really get your rocks off? Main event was actually a good match. I even like the overbooked finish. But the end result did not even give you what the biggest advertisement was for SmackDown last night, did they? No. Jay didn't choose anything. Jay did the... the, the, And I said this in yesterday's pod. I put up two podcasts yesterday. Check them out when you get a chance. But I think it was the second podcast when we were going over the Bloodline implosion. I said, watch them do some schmozzery because Roman's not there. So watch them do some schmozzery where they, they prolong this. Now, I love cliffhangers, and I, I can utilize patience to get to a better ending. Trust me. I don't mind that at all. I prefer that. But this is the stereotypical, redundant, oh, man, screw you, uh, screw you, I'm out of here. They did that, right? When a big decision needs to be made. And, they, and last night, Jay just said, screw you, Jimmy, because Jimmy inadvertently cost him the U.S. title. And then he said, and then Jay said, screw you to Solo and Paul. I'm just all up in my feelings right now. I'm going to storm off like a toddler in the mall that didn't get the new corn t-shirt or Limp biscuit t-shirt. And that's what we did last night with Jay Uso. They advertised this big... I'm okay if you want to prolong it to get to a better finish, but what? Title versus title. No, we know. We already heard this. We accept. No, we know. Wait, wait, I didn't need to. You don't need to repeat yourself. Alba, Isla, thank you. We know you accept this weird thing. Sorry about that, guys. They're getting frisky. They're starting to run their yappers again. So you have Jay Uso, this big thing, and, and Jay just, he does the tip, we were hoping it wasn't going to be that simplistic, where you just say, screw you, Jimmy, I don't know yet. Screw you, Paul and Solo, I don't know yet. And we're just waiting until Roman's there so we can have a much more impactful thing. Then, then, what, then why, why pump up that? Well, for ratings, BC, okay, I understand. Then have a more creative finish. I like the overbooked finish of the match. But once the music stopped and you saw you had at least three minutes left and Jimmy was behind Jay, you start to get a little excited, right? You're like, oh, they're going to do something huge here. This is going to be a massive moment, and this is when you utilize it. You don't have to wait till Roman's there. You'll be waiting forever. Sometimes he doesn't show up for a month. So when he's not there is when you have to be uber creative, really get people talking. They didn't do that. They're just like, oh, man, screw you, screw you. I'm out of here. Fade to black. Let's end the show. Uh, the cliffhanger last week, much better than this week. That shouldn't be the case. You should build your cliffhangers to get to the culminating point. Instead, we just kind of go up, and then we're kind of like down again, and then we wait for Roman, and maybe we'll be up again, and then if Roman's gone for two weeks, we'll be So I, I'm, 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 I'm struggling to see the good show that people are talking about. EO defeated Shotzi, okay. 
Ali was defeated by Escobar. And it, you guys don't. Do you guys realize that Ali and Baron Corbin are going for titles in NXT, and they both just simplistically lose last night? What is this doing? What is it saying for NXT? You're basically taking a giant shit on the NXT brand, and I'm not even calling it developmental anymore because half of the main roster, it seems, is on there every Tuesday night. <sighs> anyway, that's your cold open. Welcome to newer subscribers. Hi, my name is BC Amplified. What an introduction, as you can see. I'm... I might come across as not so friendly at first. I may seem like I bite on first uh, first <laughs> impression, and that might be the case. But welcome. It's good to have you. Come on board. Smash that up. That'll be something you'll learn quickly when you come into a BC Amplified podcast or upload. Always smash that up. Show the love and support and respect to the channel, and BC will give that right back to you. Um, uh, be respectful if you're a douche, if you're, if you're rude in, in any sense, you're right to fuck. Das Boot! I do not hesitate to give Das Boot. You will not be acknowledged, we won't have a back and forth, you'll just be booted. That's how we do things. BC's much too busy to go back and forth with simpletons or dumb fucks or really stupid people. You'll be Das Booted immediately. Hope that's not you. If it is, hey, we get to be more amplified and give boots. So, salute. To any new subscribers that just came on board, hope you like what you're here. If you don't, no problem. There's a million other people that will give you everything you need to hear. Simon will be there giving you fucking, uh, giving these shows mad ups. That's a lot, I'm lots of up. I'm lots of golden up. Or a fucking disheveled up or whatever the fuck he calls it. Who knows? There's people in the community that will fucking um, suck the how you doing off of these shows. That's on them. I do not sugarcoat. I don't BS. I don't care about patenting my stats. It's about quality over quantity uh, when it comes to numbers, I feel. Quality. If you bring in quality, numbers will, uh, will follow uh, in line. So, welcome to my veteran subscribers, especially my gold members, my channel members, all everyone that has that gold card after their name. Massive salute to you guys. This caps off another amazing week on the channel. Podcast after podcast, story after story, truth bomb after truth bomb. Damn, did we rock it. And it's only because my unit brought it amplified every single upload for every minute. I thank you guys uh, massively. You guys are the best. WWE, AEW Marvel fan, before we get this review kicking. And trust me, if you thought the cold open was straight fire, wait till I get to the actual review where I can actually go segment by segment and truly rip this shit apart as it justifiably needs to be. But before I do that, let me give a shout out over to... Um, my super thanker from yesterday, one of the two podcasts, let me see, I gotta make sure I get the right podcast too, this was the second podcast of the day yesterday, Zelina Slams LA Night, you guys gotta check out the podcast yesterday, we talk about Baker slamming MJF and AEW, and in WWE, Zelina slammed LA Night, bro, um, I can't believe, these, these females went, went for it last night. Poor L.A. Knight was in the cross. MJF and L.A. Knight just took it on the chin, man. Um, yes, WWE AEW Marvel fan uh, sent the coffee over to BC in the second upload yesterday. That thanks button down below. Tipping BC, tipping the content creator. It's never needed. BC's uh, always going to have his coffee. But the fact that you did that, WWE AEW Marvel fan, is always so warming and welcoming, man. I appreciate that so much. Uh, the fact that you went out of your way and threw BC a coffee yesterday when you did not need to. So, WWE AEW Marvel fan, thank you. And he says the following in this super thanks comment. I was the one that called it on the Night of Champions live stream. We did that live, and I think it was WWE AEW Marvel fan that said it first, and BC said, oh, no. No, WWE AEW Marvel fan, why would you put that out there? Because you're right. That's exactly what's happening. And we came to that conclusion, and we talked about it during that live stream. Uh, WWE AEW Marvel fan says, I, knew it was ju I just knew it was going to happen. Charlotte Flair returned on Friday Night SmackDown, and she's after Asuka's new championship in just three weeks. 
I guarantee you that WWE will have Oscar lose and then Bianca Belair turns heel and we get Bianca Belair versus Charlotte Flair at SummerSlam and Charlotte retains and EO cashes in and Charlotte leaves again and we play the same cycle over again. I deserve the pat on the back. I think we all do, man. WWE, AEW, Marvel fan, much love and respect. I appreciate that. But let's not act like we didn't know what was happening, right? All of us, after we got over the shock that they just made Asuka wait a month after Mania to do what should have been done at Mania. We all knew that Charlotte was, this was all being done for Charlie. We all knew that. So let's, as a unit, give ourselves the pat on the back. Let's, as a wrestling community, give ourselves the pat on the back. And now that we're done giving ourselves accolades, let's put our asses into fucking full gear, no pun intended to AEW, and let's start to solve the issue that WWE has. Let's stop showing up to these arenas and going, woo! every time Charlie comes back just to boo her within four weeks because they're thinking that this process can just repeat itself till she has 20 championships that's gotta stop honestly 16 times her father got over a course of an entire career and she's getting hers in in 8 or 9 years And I say all the time, you got people like Naomi who have been there longer, over 10 years before she left, and she had two championships. Naomi was so good and could have been something so special, so many, you could have marketed her so much, and the machine never wanted to get behind Naomi. But a year after year, it's Charlie. The second she gets back, we have to catapult her to the top of the mountain when the crowd does not connect with her long term, ever. The only time you hear these type of responses is when she first comes back. Anyway, I'm starting to talk about it again. I'm sure I'm going to talk about it again when we get to the segment. So, WWE, AEW, Marvel fan, I appreciate the super thanks, man. Um, One of my tried and trues and a gold card member, my channel member too, which is even more awesome. Appreciate you, man. So, let's get into this review, guys. There's uh, no reason to wait anymore over a half an hour of BC just talking about how this show was not good. If you think it was, if that's your opinion, no problem. I have no issue with that. We all have our uh, our likes and dislikes, right? Some people like Coca-Cola, some Pepsi, some McDonald's, some Burger King. Some weirdos like Wendy's. Hey, it happens. Some people like to, to shop at the Piggly Wiggly. Some like to go over to a Whole Foods. Some like Walmart. Some like Target. Some like uh, fucking toaster strudels, some like pop tarts, some like Lucky Charms, some like Fruit Loops, some like Twinkies, some like Hostess Circle Chocolate Cupcakes. My point is, we all have likes and dislikes. Nobody's going to bash you for that. But when you start to declare that this was a good show, and you start to go, nah, you're wrong, this was a good show. Well, you, you lost from the jump. There, I, and I'll go over it. You know what? Let me go. Let me, let's go in detail. You thought I was fierce in the cold open? You thought I was extra amplified in the cold open? Just wait, Jack. Now we're about to hit this hardcore. Let's get it. Let's do this correctly, right? It is indeed time to wake up, get up, and get amplified. Amped up with BC for Saturday, June the 10th, 2023, featuring the SmackDown review for June 9th, 2023. We start the show, and first of all, let's start with a swig, man. I've been fucking, I've been shaking this up nice over the last half an hour. Let's rock this now. Salute to my unit. Oh, that's a great setup. (sighs) Number four on the morning, Dunkin' Iced Original. From the fine folks at Dunkin' Donuts. Ah, coffee. <laughs> coffee. Let me see down a little. I'm going to get even more amplified so I can really tear this up. Justified. Please hold. I mean double gulp. I really mean I'm getting myself even more amplified if that's possible. And it is. Ah. <laughs> Jay Uso, face to face with Solo Sokoa, starts this show. Paul Heyman is out there as well. Paul Heyman says, This is all Jimmy's fault. The reason you're conflicted right now, Jay, it's Jimmy's fault. Blame him. 
Roman, in fact, has handpicked you, Jay, to be the right-hand man to Roman, the tribal chief, and the successor to the tribal chief. Paul says to prove this, he arranged a U.S. title match versus Austin Theory for later in the night to show Roman's loyalty and how he plans to utilize Jay Uso to the next level. And Jimmy Uso is basically just jealous of all this. Paul extends his hand to Jay. Jay thinks about it. The crowd is conflicted. And Jay says, I'm going to get back to you on that. And he walks off. First segment ended. I don't have a problem with the first segment. On paper, start this off. You have a whole show worthy of a storyline, right? You keep going back to it. And in the final segment, you have your culminating cliffhanger. And that hopefully, if done correctly, catapults you to the next week. And eventually to the pay-per-view for your final payoff, or you're going to start another chapter in this book uh, afterward. But the point is, you keep building, right? And you start at the start at the jump of the show, you continue through the show, and you go to the culminating finish. The problem is, the start of this opening segment fell flat. Jay just saying, eh, I'm going to get back to you on that. And he walks off and the crowd, listen, watch for yourself. I'm telling you, this is what a critic is. It's telling the facts. It's not giving my opinion, guys. Opinions are like assholes. Everybody's got one. They're usually full of shit. I don't care about opinions. There's times to give them. But as a critic, you're going to have to drop facts. Watch, listen to the crowd. They were like, whoa, that's it? He's just walking, okay, well, I guess something will happen later. It was weird. The line delivery was weird. I mean, it was a big buildup, and then he's just like, eh. He tried to be cool and like, you know, I'll get back to you on that, like some comedy or something. This isn't com comedy. This is supposed to be a big conflicting situation. And he says it like in a joking way. Yeah, I'm going to have to get back to you on that. And he fucking jives off. Oh, man, everybody was like, whoa, that was that fell flat. But OK, no harm, no foul. We still are preparing for hopefully something epic at the end of the show. Do we get it? BC will talk about it. First up, first match of the night, Santos Escobar versus Ali in a Money in the Bank qualifier. Escobar pins Ali via a pretty badass phantom driver. Now, the funny part here was L.A. Knight was on commentary. Zelina Vega and the LWO come out to celebrate with Escobar post-match. What are the chances, right? Zelina is staring square, like, across the ring. L.A. Knight is staring square across the ring back to LWO. And if you saw the second podcast yesterday, I talk about Zelina calling out L.A. Knight. Uh, I'm, I'm not even going to tell you what she said. Go watch it after this review. Because, uh, wow, I mean, that's that, that's that's the biggest hit you can give somebody like L.A. Knight because you're literally ripping apart the character who L.A. Knight is. Zelina Vega went for it uh, yesterday and we talked about it. And uh, last night, just to see them kind of staring at each other, that was just too funny, man. It's like, did they do that? on the WWE do that on purpose? <laughs> now, getting back to the match itself, uh, Ali losing here. Uh, what does this do for his matchup against if, if he does take on somebody like Wesley in NXT for the North American Championship or whatever they want to do with Ali in NXT going forward? What does this say about Ali? Guy continues to lose on the main roster and he went down to the fucking uh, the third brand. What what Schnoz McGee Pinocchio Pussface calls developmental goes down there on a losing streak. What does it say about NXT? Like, at least have him winning matches. I'm not saying he should beat Escobar and go to Money in the Bank, but, uh, I mean, c can he have some relevancy going into NXT? Or was the Gunther loss his relevancy? Well, BC, he, he, he lasted 10 minutes at Night of Champions with Gunther. That makes him NXT ready to be a champion. No, it makes him look like an idiot. Makes him just be on a losing streak like he has been for months. And he just went to another brand where he thinks it'll be a little easier. I don't know what that says about NXT or Ali. And that's not even it. Wait till I get to Baron Gorbin an hour or two. Next up was one of the oddest segments BC has ever seen in professional wrestling. Because when we say lacking common sense, lacking any semblance of uh, 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 logic, any semblance of logic, or knowledge behind the creativity in this, because there was none. 
they literally had four ladies go out there and just rip a Band-Aid off. But this was honestly one of the oddest segments that BC has ever seen. I'm not being overdramatic about it. I'm not embellishing. I'm not exaggerating. It's one of the oddest segments I've ever seen. Kayla Braxton introduced... Always good to see Kayla. Kayla, the ultra-beautiful Kayla Braxton. I don't know what it is about this, this gal. She is so beautiful. Kayla Braxton introduces NXT Tag Team Champions... Uh, NXT Tag Women's Champions, Alba Fire, Isla Dawn. They don't even get a word out, guys. Not even a word. Shayna Baszler and Ronda Rousey hit the ring. In roughly 90 seconds... These four ladies set up a tag team title unification match for all the titles. What the fuck? Hold up. Hold up. Now, I understand. This is where fans are going to go. Well, it has to happen, BC. So as long as we got there, I don't care how we got there. No, that doesn't work on this channel, Jack. That does not work at all. If you feel it had to happen, that's fine. This is your multi-billion dollar conglomerate company. You have to get creative. You have to have things make sense, man. You just have to. Again, I'll believe that Bray Wyatt is, is, is Bray Wyatt is five different people. I'll believe that Matt Hardy is transporting. I'll believe that lightning is shooting out of the Undertaker's hand and that Papa Shango is doing voodoo. I'll believe all of it because it's in the realism of the characters. Okay. But you're telling me that these wrestlers just went out there last night and said, let's unify the titles. Isn't that a big company decision that would have to be talked about for a while? Storyline wise, guys, I know it had. <laughs> I was about to say it has been in real life. I doubt that very much. I truly believe that Pinocchio Pussface didn't know what he was doing with this whole draft. And that's why everything has been such a mess. Keeping the title on fucking Roman when he's going on a two month vacation. While Cody has to have the title because he's going on this world tour, he's got a match with Brock that has no purpose because it was supposed to be for a title. So they had to make a new title on Raw, a totally new title. Then they had a problem where Roman now has two championships, so they had to condense that and make a new title for Roman. Two new titles there. Then they had the Raw Women's Champion on SmackDown, the SmackDown Women's Champion on Raw. So they had to totally just scrap that and make new fucking titles. They don't know what they're doing, and, and, and there's gonna be there's gonna be somebody that goes, "Nah, this was the plan all along, basically. All new titles. I think this is better." That's not the point. This could be leaps and bound better than a Raw Women's Title or a SmackDown Women's Title. It doesn't matter how. It doesn't matter. All right, some old rock. The point is how we're getting here. There's not an ounce of care or creativity behind it. Nothing makes sense. That's the problem. You can't claim this was the plan all along because it looks like there's no plan other than rearrange a bunch of titles without any semblance of care put into it. You know I'm right. You may like BC, you may say you can't stand BC, but you watch every upload, you can't get enough of BC, but, but somehow you can't stand BC, it doesn't make sense, but you probably don't make sense. So, that's fine. But you know, my words are so damn true. Nothing has made sense. Pinocchio Pussface Hunter Helmsley is lost. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's making erratic decisions. You add the old bastard in Stanford VKM into the mix, and this is the product we get. But most of this, this is Pinocchio Pussface Hunter Hearst Helmsley. In 90 seconds, these four ladies say they're going to unify the titles in a match. Wouldn't WWE want to make that call? Pinocchio, VKM, Adam Pierce, even anybody. In 90 seconds, they made a monstrous decision as if they're Jack fucking Tunney. That's an old president of WWF, by the way, that would oversee all of the big decisions, especially things to do with titles. No. They go out there, and they're like, unification? Making them just one set of tag? But let's do it! Nobody wants to go out there and make it official or say, hey, good idea, I'll... I'll, I'll Take it to my higher ups. Maybe Pierce wants to say that. No. And instead, we cut to the back immediately after this is after this is accepted. 
by all four ladies. We cut to the back and Adam Pierce is there, right? We expect him. Maybe he's going to say something about it. No, he's asking Belair backstage not to interfere with Asuka's new championship ceremony. That's about to happen at the start of hour two. Adam Pierce doesn't even care about these ladies unifying the titles. He's trying to get Belair not to go out there and interrupt Asuka because he knows that Charlotte's coming out. I mean, that's what it seems anyway. That's his big job for the night. Adam Pierce, with nothing that's making sense and so many questions that need to be answered, he's spending his time making sure Bel Air doesn't go out there. I can't have another lady out there. And when Charlie gets out there later, oh, he, he buckle. He's just like, oh man, his balls are between his fucking legs. Maybe they're in Stephanie's purse with Paul Levesque. Who knows? I don't know how this makes sense to anybody. You want to unify the titles? You say that's a better decision. That's what needs to happen. That's fine. That's not the discussion. The discussion is that actually happened on live TV, and there's people out there going, I don't mind that. <laughs> <laughs> I want a good show, Blazley. We get a video package for the Iron Sheik salute. 81 years old, the Iron Sheik, a legend that from the time you started re- watching wrestling, you you knew that Iron Sheik was a legend personified. I was just after his time, like when I really started watching, it was, it was when he was just coming off of the majority anyway of his career, but I had the action figures of the Sheik, um, everything that was written about him in the magazines, and you just knew the Sheik, he was that larger than life, so uh, salute. To everything the Sheik uh, contributed to the business and just to his family, friends, loved ones, and life in general. And to his family, friends, those that knew him the, the best, to you guys, strength and amplification sent your way on behalf of the entire Amplified unit. So a nice video package played there. A lot of people thought there should have been a 10 bell salute, a, bit, a big opening uh, for the show of Iron Sheik. I don't know. I, I don't know, man. I do agree that the opening should have had a little bit more. The video package right at the opening, who knows? Uh, but maybe they were really trying to pump out some ratings from the NBA playoffs. I don't, I don't know. That's in the eye of the beholder. But there was a nice video package at least. I don't want to dwell on that. I want to respect and uh, show appreciation to the career of the Iron Sheik. Up next, Munchkin versus Bailey. This was a Money in the Bank qualifying match. Bailey pretty simplistically pins Munchkin. Post-match, AJ Styles, who was on commentary, gets red powder dust blown in his face by Scarlett Bordeaux. The, distra- the distraction leads to Karrion Cross choking out Styles from behind the commentary table. Um, the post-match segment was actually done properly. It was actually good. The problem is, I just wish they let it breathe for a damn moment. They cut right to the back where Pierce is asking Belair... Still not to interfere with Asuka. <laughs> don't you care that these titles, your tag titles, are, are being unified? You don't want to mention, like, maybe I should talk about this with Pinocchio. Maybe I should give a call to Nick Khan. Maybe I should see if VKM is out of the weeds. I don't know. Something, right? No. Please, Bianca, please don't go out there, man. Charlie's going to be out there, and I have to set up that match. Um, so I, I don't mind this with, I thought that was done properly. Scarlet with the fucking red powder. I thought that was so cool. Carrying off of the distraction. I like that, man. That's a little bit of originality there. It's a little bit of, hey, what if we tried this? It's a lot of moving parts, but it, it worked flawlessly, I felt. And then they just, they didn't even let it breathe. They just went right to the back where Adam Pierce is like, Bianca, please, Bianca, please, man. I'll give you anything you want. I'll give you Twix, I'll give you all my Halloween candy, I'll give you my first Christmas present from Ma and Dad, I'll give you my first puppy that I ever got. Man, at least the picture anyway, otherwise he'd be uh, 412 years old, but I'll give you the photo of my first I'll give you anything you need. Right, hold on guys, B- BC popped himself there, man, I made myself LOL on that one. <laughs> 
Sometimes BC says shit and I have to stop. I'm like, actually, that was actually really funny, man. Where did you come up with that, BC? Come on, man. I'll give you my first ever bicycle. I still have it in storage. Just don't go out there. Please, Bianca. Let Asuka go face to face with Charlotte. It's what the people want. Not so much, buddy. Hour, I think that ended hour number one, right? Yeah, hour number two, we start the Asuka new title presentation. Asuka is presented with a new gold W belt. Have to market those toys in aisle five of Target. You know, there's a lot of people in the community that go, I don't know why all the belts look the same. They all got the stupid W. This one is like the the, the world, but it's just white. Guys, I, I said that a million times. I, I'm, I truly, yeah, I apologize to the tried and trues that, that have to hear this over and over. And a lot of times I have to repeat myself on these podcasts. You always have new subscribers coming in and people that just have not heard this. And it needs to be heard. Things like this, where... WWE knows that now they send these titles off to all the athletes when you win something. NBA champions will will get titles. The NFL Super Bowl champions, they'll get titles. Big boxing matches, MMA fighters, they'll get titles on big victories. WWE sends them out. They, in turn, then go to their social media with the WWE title, and they want that big W logo all over the place, all over ESPN, all over Sports Illustrated, all over social media, and then they can put them into aisle 5 at Target or aisle 12 at Walmart, or is Toys R Us still a thing? That was a thing when I was a kid. I think it went out of business. But they want them in the aisle. They, they want you to walk by and see the big Ws. It's a marketing ploy, and they look ugly as fuck. It's not a championship. These are toys. But that's why. That's why you see nothing but Ws. And and after all this time, they still don't have a a logo. WWF, it used to have an F. I don't know if you guys remember the old logo. It was was what you see now, the two Ws, and and then an, uh, an F, right? Stemming from the Ws. So it was all in one thing. Years ago, when they had to get the F out because the World Wildlife Fund sued them, so the campaign was get the F out and it became World Wrestling Entertainment. Well, obviously, it's harder to get an E off the Ws, but come up with something. All these years later, and you still have WW, what are your World Wrestling? <laughs> world Wrestling what? World Wrestling Idiots? World Wrestling Catering? World Wrestling Landscapers? What are you? Right? You order some landscapers to do some lawn work. Fucking truck shows up. Out jumps the fucking... uh, (laughs) Out jumps Braun Strowman. Ninja Tozawa. R-Truth. The Street Profits jump out. Fucking Viking Raiders. (laughs) Shotzi Blackheart. Coming with a fucking tank to landscape. What are you? World Wrestling. Where's your E? This logo is stupid anyway. I don't get any of it anyway. I can, I could talk about that for half an hour. I won't waste the fucking time. This is what BC thinks of. Uh, anyway, so they give her the new W belt, and Charlie Flair immediately hits the ring. Charlie Flair's music, and right there, all of us were like, yep, we called this at Night of Champions. We knew this is exactly why Asuka got the championship, man. And she demands a title match from the jump. Literally demands a title match. Pierce says you have to wait in line. Charlie says, I am the line, right? Do I? Do, do, do we still have that up? I am the line, right? T- 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 tell him, Charlie. Excuse me? 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 No, excuse me. Excuse me? Excuse me? Excuse me? Yeah? What? Get in line. I don't wait in line. What did you do? Make the line? I made the line. Oh, wow. Somebody's privileged. That must be nice. Must be cool to have a a, a badass last name. Anyway, point is, here's Charlie. Asuka accepts, and BC knew it was about Asuka from the jump, she just got the title to give it to Charlie 15 time. Right? You remember Booker five time, five time, five time, five time, five time. This is Charlie 15 time. Asuka accepts and then Charlie beats her up. Already beat up Asuka, by the way. Asuka goes to spray the mist and Charlie gets out of the way because Char- Charlie's too smart for that. And then Charlie beats her up and Asuka runs away. 
All of this is exactly what BC knew it was about. Asuka gets a title just to give it to Charlie. And there's people that are okay with it. If it's if you're a big Charlotte fan, Charlie Flair, cool. Ashley Flair could be a great human being. We want to see Charlotte Flair's character blossom into something we actually want to care about. So if you just like this because you like Charlie, hey, that's fine. If you truly think this was good, that's fine. But you're on a real critiquing channel right now. I don't know any other way to say it. You are talking, you are on a channel right now with somebody who knows this wrestling thing. I've been in that ring. I've taken those bumps. I have friends traveling the world right now putting their lives on the line. I am in constant communication with them. I've been in those locker rooms Big promotions to the local bingo halls. I have people in the know that know a lot more than BC pumping him information on the daily. I know what I'm talking about. This is a fact-based channel. You can think something, you can like something, but don't act like this was good. Because it's not. Because I've already done my due diligence too. How does this make Asuka look? What does this do for Charlie's stock with the fans that already didn't care, care about her? What does it do for the title? Nothing is good that stems from the repetitive process that is the Charlie agenda. I think the only words I can say two were, I got two words for ya. Fucking pathetic. Baron Corbin versus Butch. Money in the Bank qualifier. NXT's Carmelo Hayes. Trick Williams are in the front row. Butch pins Corbin via a leg lock roll up. That's what I'm calling it. I don't know. I don't know. JR9 Gaming. My right hand man on the channel. Um, I don't know if, if you think that should count uh, as a roll up. I don't even know if we're keeping track anymore. There's so many this year that I, I think we just stopped, actually. I don't even blame you. It's, 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 it's stupid at this point that nobody even cares. I, I don't even know. I get, you can't even say it was creative because if you look at the replay, and this is what I mean about due diligence, right? Taking the time to make sure that I have all my ducks in a row if I'm going to actually critique the show properly. And I did. I took a third, a fourth, a fifth look at it. If you look at the pin, Baron could have easily just propped his right shoulder up a, a, just a centimeter. So you could say it's a creative pin, but I still can't suspend my disbelief on it. <laughs> because especially the camera angle that we had. Baron, look at his face. He's like, what's happening? Am I being pinned? Your right arm isn't. Uh, now, basically, look, his foot is on the arm. His foot. His fucking deltoid can't just get up a centimeter from a foot? <laughs> Made no sense. Little Butch! Little Butch's foot. It's not like it's Andre the Giant's foot. It's not Big John Stud or Giant Gonzalez or Psycho Sid Vicious. Sid Justice. It's not Big Daddy Cool Diesel or Yoko Zuna or Big Mabel. Anybody remember Mabel? Men on a Mission? It's not their foot. I could see if it's maybe size 15. It's a fucking 20 pound foot. <laughs> this is little butch. So weird. It was, it, was just, it was a hold me down. Not really a roll up, I guess, but it was a hold me down. This was weird. I, I don't know. You, I want to say it was creative, but it was absolutely not realistic. And Baron Corbin, I think the bigger story. So butch moves on. I don't know if I need to see butch in a fucking uh, money in the bank match, uh, ladder match. But then you could also say, well, BC, man, Butch deserves a lot more than what he got. I don't, I don't like the word deserves. I know Butch can go in there. I have to be, I have to be intrigued enough to want to see Butch. I think the name Butch is just, is, is, I, I can't get on board with that. Maybe if he, he remained PD Dunn from the beginning, maybe that would be a little different. But this little Chihuahua Butch, uh, I, I, man, I, I can't get behind it like I did in NXT. I hope that does change leading into Money in the Bank. But the big story here is what the fuck was Baron Corbin even wearing? Baron Corbin goes out there like BC's walking his German Shepherd or his Chinese Chow. Like I'm walking the dogs 
And, or you just come in from the gym. He's got just a fucking tank top. He's got the fucking sport shorts. You're going to a wrestling match. Could this guy be any more irrelevant? I don't know. They've tried 10 different Baron Corbins. We'd had a lone wolf, a happy, a happy Corbin. Lone wolf, broke Corbin. Um, uh, the, the fucking, <laughs> uh, the down on his luck, Corbin, um, wrestling God, Corbin. And what was the other one? Uh, a King Corbin. Remember King Corbin? Uh, that's six. There was the other, oh, there was a seventh one too. I, I think we, we, we talked about this a couple of times in the past. There was like seven different Corbins. None of them worked. Now he's out there in fucking sport shorts and a, and a tank top like he's walking the dogs or coming back from the gym or going for his morning fucking coffee run. So odd, man. Uh, I, I looked anything but a wrestler. He looks like a, a dude that you would see side of the road, like digging into the, the digging into the road, you know, why four other guys watch him eating a sandwich and drinking their coffees, you know, you ever see that? You're driving by, you see a team of 12, 11 them are watching the one dude that's actually working. 11 supervisors for one dude that's actually doing the work. I always wondered by that. What happens after we drive by? Do they take turns, right? That's my 20 minutes, Chuck. And they hand the drill over to fucking Thomas. And Thomas starts fucking drilling for 20 minutes. And then the other guy, and then the 11, and it's just like an assembly line. Can, can 10 fucking guys out of the 11 not work at once? Or why is our tax money going to 12 fucking dudes while 11 of them watch fucking one person work? Is anybody else thinking of this shit? Anyway, we're going out to the left field with a hockey stick here. The, the point is, Baron Corbin looks like a dude that, I, that that would be making my coffee, not a professional wrestler. EO Sky then defeats Shotzi in a Money in the Bank qualifying match. Uh, I love EO Sky. I think she's one of the best pro wrestling females in the world. Um, this match didn't do much for me. Uh, over the Moonsault defeats Shotzi. The setup to that was the baddest part of this match. And baddest, I mean, like, 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 good, right? I mean, it was badass. Uh, EO like trips up Shotzi. Shotzi was on the top of the rope. EO just kind of slingshots her foot from underneath her. So Shotzi like falls backwards onto the canvas from the top rope and it looked devastating, man. And that set up the over the moon salt. Other than that, nothing to discuss. EO just fucking goes over to, to Money in the Bank. And, and, and a lot of people are like, EO's going to win, right? I think WWE AEW Marvel van in the super thanks from earlier. And again, thanks for the super thanks, man. I uh, don't know if you know how much I appreciate those. Um, I think he said it too, like EO's going to go on and win money in the bank. Well, again, this is one of my favorite females in the wrestling world, EO. I love EO. But how does it make sense when she just had a title match and lost to Bianca Belair? Or um, was, was it Bianca? It was Bianca, right? I'm getting backlash, Mr. Was that backlash that she defeated EO? Yes, backlash. And then Asuka was Knight of Champions. I don't know. We have one, sometimes two, every single month of these premium live pay-per-view events. The point is, she just lost. So now she carries around a briefcase? I, I, I don't know. I, I don't see it, personally. I mean, I think there's other ways you can go than putting a briefcase with EO. I don't know if that's the best way to utilize the money in the bank. And that's coming from a massive EO supporter. I don't see it. It's just like in NXT when everyone's like, oh, Roxanne's going to get her title back. No. Now, you guys know, if you don't know, if you're new to the channel, Roxanne Perez, Roxy is what we still call her from ROH days. Roxy is literally one of my favorite females on this planet, one of my favorite wrestlers on this planet. And I was the first one to say, no, she does not. She should not be getting that title back. Not right now. Give it to a Cora Jade. Give it to a Tiffany Stratton. That needs to be on a heel right now. Catapult that. Roxy already had her culminating moment. Unfortunately, it went a bust for reasons still kind of unknown to most of us. But she doesn't need to go right back to that. That can only hurt her more. Put her in other storylines. Mystery attacker. Things like that. I'm cool with it. In time, she'll get championships. Trust me. We don't got to make her Roxy 16 time already. So EO Sky defeat Shotzi. Goes to Money in the Bank. Okay. Main event versus... Uh, the main event was uh, for the US Championship. This is Theory Champion taking on Challenger Jey Uso. This was a good match. I And I liked the overbooked finish. Listen to all of this. 
The ref gets knocked out of the ring late in the match. Jay hits the massive frog splash in pins theory. But there was no ref. He was knocked out. So JK, he did not pin theory. Pretty Deadly then hit the ring. Jimmy Uso comes out, meets them head on, takes out Pretty Deadly. Uh, Jimmy Uso takes out Pretty Deadly. Solo Sokoa then joins the party. Solo drops Jimmy. Solo then goes to deliver the Samoan spike to Jimmy, but Jay stops him. Jimmy goes to super kick Solo, but inadvertently strikes Jay. So Jimmy goes to take out Solo. Um, but ends up inadvertently hitting Jay. Solo and Jimmy then tussle to the outside. Theory ends up stealing the quick pinfall victory over Jay from Jimmy's super kick. So I liked all of that, man. I love overbooking shit like that. It shows that people are caring. The agent in the match cared. Jay then shoves Jimmy away post-match. And walks off right past Paul Heyman and Solo. We go off the air. That I didn't like. When the music stopped and you saw you had at least three minutes left in the program and Jimmy is behind Jay. Jay is distraught sitting down like what just happened? I lost my title match. My own brother made me lose. You were hoping that they had something really creative planned. There was enough time. The The moment was building by the second. By the moment. And then all of a sudden, we just did the repetitive, the over-redundant, the rinse and repeated, screw you and screw you. I'm not making my decision yet. I don't even know how I feel. And they run off, right? We see this all the time with big decisions. I'm okay with patience and letting it play out, right? If done properly, no question, right? Build it up, fine. But this was the moment where you really had the wrestling world interested. All right, Jay's big decision. Let's see something we haven't seen before. Let's do something big, especially knowing that Roman's not there. You really want to up your game. Why just curl up in a ball, give us the standard quote, uh, quota, right? Or the status quo, I should say. <laughs> They've more than met their quota of redundancy. <laughs> But why give us the status quo and just curl up in a ball and, and wait until NBA finals are over or until Roman is there? Why do that? Give us something massive when Roman is not there. And when Roman's there, we're even more intrigued. Wow, Roman has to Roman has to fucking decipher all of what we just witnessed. This is gonna be huge. I couldn't believe he just was like, man, you kicked me. Screw you. And then he's looking at Paul and Solo. Man, I don't even know what to feel about you. Well, that was the whole thing that we waited all week for. You were supposed to think about this shit. My point is, I'm not saying you had to give the whole story away last night. I'm saying we could have done something with the, the world of professional wrestling actually intrigued. And that was the big marketed segment of the week for all of WWE programming. That's the big culminating moment. That's the cliffhanger. When last week's cliffhanger is better than this week's, you're not ascending, you're declining. Right? Last week's cliffhanger had everybody like, whoa, this one was like, eh. <laughs> Roman comes back, are we more like, are we just going through like the valleys? Or are we trying to get to the mountaintop? Nobody wants to just trudge through valleys. Up, down. You're tired by the time you get to the th third week. The third mountain. The, the third fucking valley mountain. Get to the mountaintop. Right? And to do that, you gotta keep going upwards. Choose the biggest mountain and let's get there. My name is BC Amplified. This has been your Smackdown review for 6923. This has been the Amped Up Podcast for 61023. And that's what I got for you, man. Thank you to every single Amplified Unit Gold member, channel members. I really appreciate you guys. That support for the channel is the highest level, man. Two things uh, th that I, I cannot thank you guys enough for. Smashing the up, totally free, by the way. That doesn't cost a damn thing. Smashing the up, I cannot thank you enough. And if you do become a channel member, guys, that's the most Amplified level. You guys are basically my boardroom committee. <laughs> we do live stream chats that are just uh, members only chats. So we do those a couple of times a month. Uh, I try to get those in. Um, randomly, I give shout outs to all my channel members uh, via these uploads, like literally roll calls <laughs> of every channel member. And of course, we have a channel member of the week. Every single week, a new channel member. This week, it is Christopher Blackshear. Christopher, tried and true. 
So I appreciate you guys as well. And just my red team in general, my entire amplified unit to you guys, man. Thank you for another tremendous week on the channel. Uh, we'll do it all again next week. Stay subscribed, obviously. Keep the notification bell on. I could come up with uploads this weekend, man. You never know. If a big story breaks or if BC just has time and I want to shoot the shit, we are going to rock out some wrestling talk. Um, but until next time, and there will be a next time, top guy, I'm out. BC saying, check you. Salute. Hey, are you, are you going to get in line now, finally, Charlie? Because we're about to end the podcast. Can you do me a favor? Can you just take the L and just admit you have to get in line? Can you please do that? Excuse me? I, I'm, you got to get in line. I don't wait in line. <laughs> Here's the, uh, wait, you make the thing? I made the line. Okay, that's it. I can't, I can't do it. I, I can't with her, guys. I can't. I tried. I tried. I got to end the podcast. This is giving me a headache. I'm out. Till next time. Check you. Excuse me? No, we're not doing this again. Stop. I don't wait in line. Well, you have to wait in line. You gotta wait in line.